Hello everyone and welcome to Resilience Agenda's World Mental Health Day webinar. We're really grateful that you're here. We'll just wait for another minute or so while people jump online. And we've got people from all over the world joining us today. We've got people in Sweden, I know. Um, we've got people in Vietnam joining us today. We've got some people from the United States. And of course, we've got Australians here as well. What we're gonna run through today is just a little bit about what's new in the 2024 Mental Fitness Diary, um, what you've come to know and love from previous years, and yeah, just to talk about why we're here today on Tuesday, the 10th of October, for World Mental Health Day. So, why are we here? It is World Mental Health Day, and what does it mean? for it to be World Mental Health Day today. The theme of this year's Mental Health Day is that mental health is a universal human right. Now, what does that mean? Mental health is, or well, for the last um, 50 years, has been the forgotten stepchild of mental health and well-being. So while many of us have focused on our physical well-being for a long time, mental health has been mired in stigma and shame and misunderstanding. And I think one of the good things to come out of COVID was the renewed uh, sense that mental health is important and understanding that mental health can be improved and protected, but we also have to really look after people who are struggling with their mental health. And so what that means is that governments um, have a role to play in making access to mental health services universal and giving people the opportunities to seek the help they need, to get the professional support they need, because if we take early action, um, no matter where we are on the, uh, on, on the spectrum, we can improve our mental health. And then organisations have a role to play, in particular our workplaces, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. The way we work, the environments we create, the way we treat each other, and especially the role of our managers, that's really, really important for um, looking after our mental health and wellbeing. And then there's a role that we can play as individuals. What can we do for our own mental health? What's in our circle of control? And then when we're in a good space, what can we do to support the people around us? That means our families, our, um, our colleagues, and of course, if we can, can we impact uh, the wider world? So Resilience Agenda has been around for about eight years. We started because we wanted to change the meaning of mental health. That's still our catchphrase. You know, at the moment when you think of mental health, um, you know, um, you think of you think of illness and you think of stigma, and it's something that just um, people don't want to go near, and they're late taking action when it comes to the mental health. The whole idea of resilience agenda is that we can do more before we become unwell in order to understand and learn about mental health. There are skills we can learn, there are mindsets we can take, there are habits we can implement so that we have a better understanding of just the concept of mental health, what good mental health looks like, what poor mental health looks like, and the process for getting there. And for us, the process of getting there involves mental fitness. So. What we've got on the screen here is what's called the mental fitness pie. And, you know, a lot of people believe that what happens to you necessarily impacts your mental health. Now, this pie here comes from a US researcher by the name of Sonia Lubomirsky. And what she's found, and the numbers are not exactly um, accurate or perfect, nevertheless, but the point is, what happens to us, the circumstances we're in, um, you know, the, the childhood we grew up with, the, the relationships we have, it accounts for about 10% of our mental fitness, our well-being, and our mental health. What accounts for 50% is our genetics. And so a lot of people say, oh, I was born this way and I can't change, this is how I am. Well, um, some of your genes matter. You know, who your parents were does matter. We do inherit um, susceptibility or, or traits from our parents that do impact our mental health and well-being. In positive and good news, when it comes to um, well-being, 
We're learning about a field called epigenetics at the moment, which is where our genes can turn on or turn off depending on our circumstances and our environment and our lifestyle. And that's really encouraging. Obviously, stress is going to turn on some of those um, genes that make us feel worse. Um, managing our stress well is going to, to help us well. And what we can do, and this is the part that is so exciting and inspiring and drives us at Resilience Agenda, is roughly 40% of our well-being is determined by our actions and our thoughts and what we do. And that's what we call our mental fitness practices and habits. And you might be thinking, well, hang on, how can our circumstances, you know, the fact that, you know, you've got kids who are unwell or, you know, you, you might not have a job or you might have, um, you know, relationship conflict or whatever it might be, how can those things, um, you know, only be, only be worth 10% of our well-being? And the reason is, that it's the way we respond to those situations that determines how well or how, um, or how unwell we might be. If we have resilience, we can um, choose and, uh, and use more, um, more appropriate, more helpful, more empowering coping mechanisms. If we're less resilient, that means we might turn to unhealthier coping mechanisms to deal with challenges. And when life gets really busy, when you have four or five challenges popping up at once, or you have a major trauma and things just get overwhelming, it's the way we respond to situations that matters. And two events can have a whole lot of different meanings. And we do unpack that in the diary. And so we're using this term mental fitness. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with the term mental fitness, who might be joining the webinar for the first time, mental fitness is the how-to for building resilience. Mental fitness is the how-to for improving and protecting your mental health. And so we like to say mental fitness is a mindset, a process, and a set of strategies for developing, maintaining, and improving good mental health. The mindset, this is really important, is that our mental health and our well-being can be improved. Just because you might be struggling at the moment or have had a recent diagnosis does not mean you're broken. Things can get better with the right support from our friends and family and of course the right professional support and of course the right habits. The process that we love and what makes mental fitness such an inspiring message for people is that we can build our fit mental fitness just like we can our physical fitness. And how do we do that? Well, we set goals. We try and do it together. We try and make it as fun as possible. Um, you know, we, we figure out why we want to do it and where we want to go with it. And when it gets hard, we don't just give up or say, I can't do this. We keep training and trying new different ways. And, you know, that's such an inspiring way of looking at our well-being. Things can get better. We have a role to play in making them get better. And, you know, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be difficult. It's not easy but it's simple. And then the strategies, what are they? The things you can do. And if you open the newspaper, if you go online, there's all sorts of tips and tools and tricks that people uh, wanna promise you that's gonna be a quick fix for um, developing, maintaining, and improving your mental health. It's not gonna happen overnight. It's not a panacea. We don't wanna make any false promises, but over time, little 1% changes can make a difference. And what we say is, imagine a world where people approach the concept of mental fitness like their physical fitness, with no shame, no stigma, they enjoy the process. It'd be, it'd be a very different world. And so what are those strategies? And we go through these in the diary, we go through these in our presentations, and we love talking about them in all the different content we put online, whether that's on Facebook or Instagram, on our podcast, or through the emails that we send through once a month. Movement, nutrition, sleep, connection, mindset. These are the pillars of well-being. These are the things that we all do. Do you move a little or do you move a lot? Do you eat well or do you eat poorly? Do you sleep well or do you not sleep well? 
Um, are your relationships strong and, um, and, and connected, or are they riven by conflict and strife? And do we believe that we can improve and, um, and make a difference to our well-being? Those things happen to us regardless. And the question is, how are we trying to optimise each of those things? And then optimism, thinking that the future can be better, not that it will. People often think that optimism is about you know, denying problems. There's wars on at the moment. There were COVID, there's people dying. All sorts of things are going wrong. Climate change is an issue. But the idea that things can get better and that we have a role to play in them is really important. And that applies to the world and our well-being. Mindfulness is a bit of a buzzword recently. You might have heard it at work and you're trying to work out what it means. Is it people sitting on cushions um, for hours a day? No. What mindfulness is, is just attending to what you're doing as you're doing it. It's the opposite of mindlessness. Um, it's, it's about avoiding distractions when you're trying to focus on something you need to focus on. In particular, it's about handling negative thoughts and those overpowering, um, really strong emotions that can get us down and keep us in bed and stop us doing things and being able to say, you know what? I choose to focus on something else. It's not easy to do, but it's a really valuable skill. Gratitude is about understanding that um, not everything is awful. Things are never 100% awful. They might be really front of mind, those bad things, but if we look hard enough, there's always something, just something small that we can hang our hat on that's positive. And noticing those little moments of goodness each day is a skill and we need to practice it. People say, oh, I'm a grateful person, but you've got to do grateful things. You've got to do gratitude every day. And that's one of the things that people use our diary for is to simply write down three unique little things each day, different things. You, can, you, know, you, don't, you don't just want to say my family and my job every day because it'll get boring, but three unique and specific things that went well, even if everything else was awful. And so that's really important. Reframing is all about taking a situation and thinking, how else can I look at this? Can I change the way I, what, am I, what do I believe here? What do I have to think differently about this in order to go from an unhelpful response to a more helpful response? And then perspective, looking at things from other people's perspective, looking at things um, from the future perspective, looking at things um, in different ways. And it's such a valuable skill to avoid getting really blinkered um, with what's going on in life. And we love sharing these ideas. If you follow us online, if you've been buying our diaries for a while, each year we update the content and are really strong in trying to make these ideas come alive and make them really easy to approach, but also um, give you the latest science. And so you learn more about what is actually in these and how to do these things uh, in the diary. And I guess the, the, the key point here that we're trying to, trying to make is that we're all busy. We've all got projects and kids and jobs and old parents to look after, whatever it might be. And some people have um, bigger challenges than others. And one of the biggest challenges that people say to us is, hey, I'm just overwhelmed. I've got no time. I've got no energy. And so people want to manage their time by fitting more into it. And what we're saying is just step back for a moment, if you can, of course, if you're really unwell, that's really hard. But if you're able, step back and prioritize your well-being. And that's those 10 things from the previous um, page. That's what's in your control, and they are the foundations of your well-being. If you are not doing those things adequately, um, you know, you'll, you'll burn out and, um, you know, setbacks will become overwhelming. And so we want to try and improve those things. And so you can proactively um, build your mental fitness. And that means from today onwards, when you buy your diary, you say, you know what, I'm going to dedicate 10 minutes uh, a day to writing in my, in my journal, or I'm going to call a friend every weekend. And you know, it's these little actions that done consistently just give us a boost of energy. But you can also do it reactively when you've had an awful day. Like I had an awful day last Tuesday. I didn't sleep. I heard some bad news from a colleague. You know, it's a, a negative thing happened at the business. Just I was feeling awful. Anyway, the next day, 
I set that up and I wrote down in my diary, I said, you know what, I need to do three things for myself just to break this cycle. So I called my mum, I called a friend, I went for a jog and did some yoga, I did some journaling. Um, and then the rest of the week was great because I broke that cycle and I guess um, you know, the lucky thing about doing this job for the last um, 10 years is that I can, you know, those, those habits are front of mind. And so you can do really small ones when things um, become overwhelming, or you can do the big stuff. A little one, just before we came online here, we were having technical problems, the camera wasn't working, I didn't know if the slides were going to work, and I was feeling really stressed because I wanted to show you all these lovely slides that we've made. And I was starting to panic. But I, was, I said, hang on, just need to do some breathing here. The out breath, that's how you relax or calm down when you're having a difficult moment. And we were able to think through the problem. We got everything right five minutes before we came online. And so just that idea that you can plan your well-being before you have an issue, um, before life gets overwhelming, because that's not the right time to start. That's when you need the skills and the habits in place in order to you know, be able to turn to them. And if you've got three, you choose from those three. If you've got 10 tools, that's great. I can choose from 30 tools. Some of them are automatic, some of them I need to think about. But that's, that's how we stay resilient and stay well when life gets hard. Um, we're going to talk about the diary a bit now. Um, that's why a lot of you are here. You know, we often get questions about, well, hang on, it's a diary. It costs 40 bucks. Why, you know, why is it special? Why should I, why, why should I get this diary? And you've either bought one yourself or you're considering getting one uh, for yourself or your family and friends or buying them for the team at work. And, you know, the people who buy them love them simply because, you know, it's a regular everyday diary with a theme and messages and inspiration and motivation for taking care of yourself. So all those things we just covered about why mental health and mental fitness is important, how we can deal with challenging situations and make it an everyday habit, that's what the diary is all about. And you'll see one of the pages there with the girls on the left. And every month, you know, we go through and we you know, explain it. Over, over the course of a year, you learn 36 new skills um, which is more than enough for dealing with challenging situations. And why a diary? Well, hang on, I'll, just, I'll just give you a bit of detail first about it. It's, you know, you know why a diary? Um, <laughs> it's because so, so many of us spend so much time online these days. You know, an online world's got lots of information, it's distracting, it's great. Online is great. And if you use an online planner, whether it's Outlook, I use Outlook myself, that's great. But Outlook's great for the details. It's not great for the bigger picture. And a lot of the people who use our diaries say, hang on, I sit down with it every morning with a coffee. You know, I, ha I stack the, the diary um, habit onto my um, morning coffee and I reflect. Opening your diary becomes a habit that encourages you to reflect and think and learn. It might be two minutes, it might be 10 minutes, but it's just time for yourself, whether it's when you get up or when you, um, yeah, when you sit down for a coffee, when you're sitting on the train, whatever it might be. And we're going to go through the key steps that we do and that we encourage you to do in a moment. But you know, a lot of people ask us, you know, how does the diary work? Well, it's FSC certified. That means we didn't cut down the Amazon to print it, um, you know, really high quality paper. It's the A5 size, 192 pages with a week on two pages. And we think that's a really good size because it's both enough room to write the key things in your life and um, it's small enough to be portable. Now, if you have a lot of appointments, maybe um, that size won't work for you. And next year, we're thinking about different sizes. But it's called a wellbeing diary because we encourage people to put the really important things like when they're catching up with friends, when they're going to move, um, when they're going to do their reading and their journaling, you put those things in the diary and then you've got all the space there. Vegan leather, and we've produced about 100,000 of these over the years. We've never had one sent back because it fell apart. And so it is a resilient agenda, not just a resilience agenda. And um, you can lay it flat, you can bend it back, 
you, it's it, it'll it'll last the whole year, and that's that, that, that's a high quality diary. And so, just a few of those things that I covered before. Why a diary? Some of you might know why a diary. Others of you might be thinking, well, hang on, I haven't used a diary for years. Do people even still use paper diaries? The answer is yes. They're very popular. Firstly, it's a physical prompt. It's different to your phone. What I like to do, I don't always get this right, but I pick up my diary first thing in the morning before I pick up my phone, and I focus on my weekly goals, my daily priorities, and think, hang on, at a big picture level, what is really, really important today? Is it my well-being? Is it a connection with someone? Is it my work? And so it's a physical thing and it's nice. Um, mental health is often a, a very intangible subject and people like that. Secondly, handwriting. There is science to show that handwriting changes the way you think and structure your thoughts. Think about when you're doing some typing on the computer or on your phone. You type something and you just delete it. You type something and you delete it. And what that encourages is for us to kind of blurt out what, what comes to mind. Most people don't like writing, stopping, writing, scribbling, crossing it out. So what you do when you write is you start, you pause, you structure your thoughts, and you think, hang on, how do I want to express that? And then that thought goes down into paper, and if it's a worry, you give yourself permission to forget it because you've put it somewhere safe, you've, you've processed it. But that new structured thought is now the story. That's the way um, you will remember and talk to yourself about it. And so if you've got 10 things on your mind, we encourage you to write them down. Use the notebooks, use the diaries to write them down so that, um, and by hand, and not just on a computer, so that you structure your thoughts. So there's a whole lot of science around that and I'd really love to share more about that with you next year. We talked about habit stacking, put it next to a cup of tea, put it next to the kettle so that it's there. It might take 28 or 30 days to learn the habit of using the diary every day if you're not used to it, but um, you can just stack it onto another habit you already do, something you already do of a morning. Of course, in the diary, there's goal setting. You get a chance to, um, to, to figure out where you want to go. Someone said to me the other day, I'm not a goal setter. I don't set goals. And I said to them, well, if you don't know where you're going, how do you know whether you're on the right track? And so sometimes life can feel really confusing and uh, directionless. Well, that's often because we're not going in the direction that we should be going or we could be going. And so if life's feeling a bit blah, um, purpose and direction are a really important part of that as well. Prioritizing. A lot of people make to-do lists, a lot less people prioritize their to-do li to list really, uh, really well. And so what that means is that people might have 20 things to do, but they're not doing the most important things first. They're not doing the things that support the other things. And so, yeah, make to-do lists, whether it's on your phone or in your, in your diary or what have you, but then turn them into, um, into priorities. One priority, two priorities, three priorities. And what a lot of people overlook is their well-being, all those 10 tools. And so the diary reminds you, well, hang on, have you thought about connection this month? Are you falling behind with catching up with your friends? Or are you falling behind with the way you're thinking and your mindset? And so it just prompts you throughout the year to prioritize what's important. And the big takeaway, if you think, if you take nothing else away from today, is prioritize your well-being and put it in your schedule whether it's our diary or an Outlook or wherever you, however you plan, put your well-being activities from the toolkit in your diary first. There's plenty of life that will fit around them, but if you don't do the important big things first, you'll never find time for them. If they're not in your diary, you won't do them, especially if they're not a habit. That's really important. Time blocking is where we schedule big chunks of time, whether it's half an hour or two hours or whatever it might be, in order to turn that priority into an action. I need to work on the marketing project. And so I'm gonna um, find two hours of time, and that's that two hours from 10 to 12 is when I'm gonna do it. Or I need to catch up with my friend Karen. Well, that's gonna take an hour and a half. So I block out an hour and a half. 
And what you'll find when you do this in your diary and um, you, know, you do this consistently is the day only has space for about five or six big things. Are you doing the right five or six big things? And that's why so many of us feel stressed and unproductive at the end of the day because we didn't do what we wanted to do and we didn't give each um, thing we need to do its appropriate amount of time. We talked about how the online world, as great as it is, is really um, good at distracting us, taking us to Facebook or news sites that may not um, be what we really want to do. The diary helps you focus in on what matters. And then, of course, practical skills. I mean, these are life skills that we all need. They don't teach you in school how to do these things. And yeah, it's a diary that, and, a, and, a, and a company that makes diaries that's trying their very best to, to share this message. And one really cool thing that um, I didn't actually plan when we started this um, project about eight years ago was that by using a diary, um, you know, with a big Resilience Agenda logo on it and people see that it's got you know, little articles in there, they ask you, what are you doing? What's that about? And what we've found, and this is probably the most exciting thing and why I love this company, is that people are able to share their values, what's important to them around well-being or the importance of mental health or looking after yourself or whatever it is with their friends. They can show them what they learnt this week. There's a, a group of ladies uh, at a company in Melbourne who meet on a Monday morning and they talk about the quote at the top of the page every every week. And that's their, you know, their, their well-being check-in, for example. And I really love that story. And then... We'll talk about it later, but you can also give the gift of um, you know, the diary to other people in order to, you know, just, it's a nice way of saying, I care, I care about your mental health. We know mental health's hard, have a read of this. And it just starts conversations. And that's the coolest thing, um, in my opinion. So what is inside the diary? Like what actually is it? And so you can see here one of the 2024 chapters. What does it mean to be anxious? And so we write um, about 800 words there, uh, put a few pictures in, talk about a challenge that many of us face. And, you know, we're all anxious. Not all of us have anxiety disorder, but a lot of us are anxious and I'm anxious uh, from time to time. And then how can we think about it differently? How do we cope with it, given that it's inevitable? I mean, anxiety if we didn't have it, for example, we would never, we would never do anything. It, it, it drives us. And so we need to use it. We need to minimize it when it takes over. We might need support for that, but we need to do what we can with it. And so that's, that's uh, an example of one of the monthly spreads. And these are the things that people find really, really inspirational about the diary. So let's just go through the different sections. I find it's really important or well, I enjoy anyway, to plan the year ahead. So for 2024, look ahead to the year, you put your school holidays in here. If you're going away anywhere, anything that's gonna interrupt your regular schedule or your wellbeing schedule or your sleep or your exercise plans, whatever it is, I like to put them in here. For school holidays, public holidays, people visiting, it just gives me a annual overview. And then I think the month is a really cool way of thinking, okay, what, what's next? And so you can put your priorities in here, you can set monthly goals. Um, you know, we encourage you to set a handful of monthly goals. And the way to set a goal is to say, when this month ends, this is what I will have done. This is what I um, will have achieved. And then you go back and you figure out how you're gonna do it. What needs to be done on what day? And so that's a really nice way of, of planning. And that photo probably isn't as clear as it should be, but that's the weekly spread. Plenty of room there to write your daily activities. And so if you look up to the top left, you'll see the month you're in and you'll see a lovely inspirational quote. And we spend a lot of time thinking about those quotes. They're hopefully motivational, hopefully they're inspirational, hopefully they are helpful. And they're, you know, they're, really, they're really insightful. They're not just about you know, you can do anything, be happy regardless. It's not, that's not the kind of quotes they are. They're quotes that try and bring, you know, insight to the monthly spreads to life. And on the right, at the top, you'll see the weekly priorities. 
So I use this on a Sunday night very often, or if I don't do that, I'll use it on a Sunday morning. And I think to myself, what didn't go that well last week? What do I need to do or to plan for this to be a really good week? Is there something at work that I need to submit by Friday? Do I need to make an effort to catch up with someone? Or do I need to refocus on my well-being plans? Again, we overlook these things. We think we'll fit them in later, but we need to actually prioritize them. And then each day, when you sit down with your diary, you think, okay, from those weekly priorities, and then to the top three daily goals, or daily priorities, how do I actually do this? What's gonna to matter today? I need to catch up with Karen today or else something bad's gonna happen. Or I need to um, go for a walk this morning because I just, I'm feeling overwhelmed. And you plan it and you put it down. And the, this is really important and I should have said it before. Um, once something goes in your diary, it's kind of like an appointment, even with yourself. So you're making appointments with yourself. And just like it's pretty hard to cancel an appointment on someone else, no one likes changing dinner plans 10 minutes before you go out for dinner. Once it's in there, you're less likely to cancel on yourself. You're less likely to say, you know what, I'm not motivated to do this. Uh, and for people who struggle with mental health challenges, sometimes organizing their day or you know, finding motivation is really hard. And a lot of our, um, uh, a lot of our supporters use this, this diary in concert with their psychologist or their, or their treatment teams to actually put the things into their calendar that they need to do. I need to go for a walk three times a week, otherwise I'm gonna feel flat. I need to um, catch up with one person a week. When am I gonna do it? What time, what day, how's it gonna happen? And it might sound really simple, but when you're doing it tough, Sometimes even just those little things can feel overwhelming. And then before we covered the monthly spread, that is um, yeah, the part that's really exciting about the diary. And we put a lot of time, a lot of research, a lot of planning into trying to say something different and scientifically valid and actionable and practical um, that you might not have heard before. Um, so there's, that's what it looks like. And then in the make it happen section on the bottom right, we have um, three steps or three ways to take action on that topic. So reflect, that doesn't require that much time. You can think about it while you're in the shower. And we're basically, um, it's, a, it's a thought exercise. And so that usually doesn't take too much time. And you can start thinking differently about the thoughts you're having, whether they're anxious thoughts. Plan is where we say, put something in your diary. Use the diary to actually um, plan an activity um, for the week ahead or for the month ahead. And that way you might start the habit. And then act is a new action or a new habit or some maybe more difficult thing you might need to do um, to go out there and, and make a change. So there's 12 months in the year, there are three activities per month, 36 skills. Three of them are really easy, three of them are in the middle, and three of them take a bit more effort to get underway. And this year, these are the topics. And so we start nice and broad, resilience and the foundations of mental fitness, what's the difference between mental illness and mental health, that's really important, why we shouldn't be scared of stress and how it can be useful. In April, we introduce a concept called thinking traps, which is kind of like how we talk to ourselves and we often you know, say things to ourselves that we wouldn't say to a friend and it leads to, it just makes us feel awful and we stop doing the things that are really important to us. We talk about anxiety and how we might want it to go away, but it's actually something we can utilize and it can drive us. That's not easy, but it's a really interesting idea. So journaling. Journaling might be something that you haven't done since you're a teenager, but it's this idea that when you've got a lot on your mind, put it on paper, download your thoughts, structure your thoughts. And what happens is you give yourself permission to forget. And um, people who keep a diary or who, who have journaled for many years say that it's such a, a great um, way of feeling better. And there's a whole lot of science around it too. Um, 
Stoicism is an ancient um, thought school of philosophy that is basically the, the foundation of modern cognitive. How we can both give more to others and find meaning in that way, but also um, you know, find the support we need. We need to have a good team around us. We need to belong to a tribe. And then December is about purpose. People often get reflective at the end of the year, start setting New Year's resolutions. Well, if you're setting goals for 2024 that aren't your goals or they're, they're not really you know, valuable to you, you won't stick with them. And so we encourage you to go back and say, what's really important to me um, before I set my goals, before I make a change for next year, what do I really want? And it's a really, really valuable exercise. Uh, we talked about the make it happen section. That's what it looks like. And then of course, sometimes, um, sometimes um, you need support. And um, that's, that's uh, we provide these services for people as well. So we have those in the book. How do you use the diary? You can use it as a regular appointment planner, a calendar. Um, you can time block key chunks of time. You can use it for gratitude. You can just write notes in it. There's all sorts of different ways to use it. Um, we're running short of time. And uh, yeah, I know uh, people are very busy, so I don't want to, uh, to go over time here. But um, if you want to know more, jump on to Resilience Agenda Radio, jump onto our podcast. Um, we've got about 25 episodes there with some of the world's leading wellbeing thinkers. And yeah, we're going to do, I think we're going to do it again next year. So I'm going to ask my colleague who we're going to get in touch with next year, but it's just really exciting to, to get experts on and to talk about how people support their own mental fitness and what we can do, um, you know, what we can do to support others. So jump on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, whatever works for you. And then workplace mental fitness training. Um, people have asked us, hey, I need more than the diaries. I need training for my staff. I want to take this message to the, the, um, the, to the office. What can I do? And so we've partnered up with some of the world's leading uh, wellbeing experts and started a new organization called Mental Fitness Hub. It's specifically for workplaces. And I'd encourage you to jump online and learn all about it. You can become a certified mental fitness champion through your workplace. It's a positive, practical, and proactive um, certification or accreditation that says, I understand mental fitness. I know how to support myself, my team, and other people. And I'm gonna go out and make a difference in my workplace and we're gonna change business as usual. So jump on to Mental Fitness Hub there. Um, we wanna give you a discount. If you have not bought your diary already, jump online and um, use the code Mental Health Day 2023. If you have already bought your diaries, thank you very much. We encourage you to, um, if you like what we've said today and you like what's in the mail, to go and um, yeah, speak to your um, you know, friends and family, see if they'd like them or give them a surprise gift. That code is valid for the next 24 hours, so feel free to use that. And of course, jump online, resilienceagenda.com to get your um, copy today, or you can find out more on Facebook or Instagram, on LinkedIn, 